Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our discussion of James Clear's Atomic Habits. So I have this little baby right in front of me and it was packed full of goodness. Um, if you have not already read the book and you're watching this, I would highly suggest the paper copy. That's just my preference for this one um, because I think you want to look at it as kind of a serious workbook and the charts are really helpful. So there's just a lot of charts on here. I had this one marked because I'm was actually telling my or 17 year old about like these two minute things that you can help yourself with. So a lot of these charts in here are really helpful for you to kind of reference back. And I actually wrote a lot in this book too. Comment, comment in the chat. Are you a person that writes in books? Cause I totally am. I didn't used to be, but yeah, the cheat sheets, I'm going to, I think I might screen share some of those two as well, but really exciting for me is that we have the power to change things one habit at a time. Sounds simple. And if you've read um, The Compound Effect, this is not the same, but it is a similar idea in that you have, you're powerful and you're in control of, um, you're really in control of your own future. And I know that we know that, like Wesson, we would never say that we aren't in control, but I think what happens with habits is that we fall into traps and we slip up and we get caught. So this might not be fun for most of you, but uh, I want y'all to comment with a habit that you get caught in. And I mean, I'm happy to share. I'm happy to share all the things. But for me, um, probably one of my main traps every day is I tend to be reactive and responsive way more than a, here's my structured routine schedule, here's what I'm doing. And so other people's priorities totally become my priorities. And that might sound silly, but I have triggers that lead to that, right? Mom, I'm hungry. So when someone says, mom, I'm hungry, it leads me to have the habit of responding and stopping what I'm doing. Even if my kid that's hungry, like could wait 20 minutes for everyone else to be hungry for them to eat at one time. And maybe again, maybe it sounds silly. Maybe some of you are like, oh, that's a great habit. No, it's not because I could be working. I could be, I could be listening to my kids. Don't perceive me as when I listen to a podcast or a book, if I'm listening and folding laundry, they don't perceive that as me doing anything of value, right? Like I'm free. Clearly I'm free. Um, you know, maybe this doesn't happen in your house, but if I'm making this happens to me a lot, I will also like make dinner and listen to something, or I'll be on a phone call that also is not perceived as doing anything to most people around me. So I've realized that, um, I don't do a good job of protecting time. And so I need to get triggers, which we'll talk about in here, like little triggers or traps that I set for myself, just like the traps I set for myself with my supplements. They're laid out for me in the morning. My gym clothes are laid out for me the night before. I mean, I am totally a, um, I didn't used to speak this for myself, but I'm a pretty disciplined person. Like if I plan to do something, it will happen. I will never just forget about it or I'll never just decide not to, or I'll never like, I wouldn't be the person on here guys. I might show up five minutes late sometimes for a call. Um, like maybe it's someone else's and they said, Hey, will you join in? But I would never forget it was happening. Like it would not be in who I am to forget it was happening. So the reason I'm kind of preferencing this is when we discuss it, make sure you bring your personality into this discussion. Cause for some of you guys, you're like, well, of course you have to stop doing something and tell yourself it's bad for you to actually stop. Maybe that's why your brain already works. But for some of us, I have had, it's taken me 10 years to even realize I was disciplined at all. Cause the way that my discipline works is it's not thoughtful. It is automatic. Like it's automatic for me to pack my kids swim bags when they get them from swim for the next day, because I just don't know. I know I won't have time. It's not because I'm disciplined to me. It's not because it's a discipline. It's because I won't have time tomorrow. So I will do it now. So same thing with laundry. I never let laundry come out of the dryer and sit in a basket unfolded or unsorted. I don't always put it away, but I just, in my mind, that's just a routine, but it's a habit. And it's actually a healthy habit that sets me up for future success. So guys, let's also remember that we have these already ingrained in us. We have the power to harvest, a harvest, harvest is a weird word, to harness them and what's in our brains to function and really create new habits. Um, and when it comes to our business, I know not everyone that'll be doing this necessarily does a young, a young living business, but with our business, um, I will say that for me, it is in my habit to Facebook message a lot of people every day. It's a habit. I can do it. I can track it. I know how many people it is. I know who it is. It is not a habit for me to use any other platform on a daily basis to personally contact people. It's not a habit. I do it, but it's not a daily habit. And I haven't figured out a trigger to make it one that doesn't have a negative emotion 
corresponding, like, oh, I have to do this or, oh, and right. And the get to part of it that we'll get to talking about that. But I just want y'all to kind of everyone have a frame of reference of what this looks like. Yeah, social, that's what I'm saying. I was waiting to make sure I could read some social media scrolling, um, autopilot answer. Yeah, mm, autopilot answering without truly hearing. So yeah, things that we don't even realize we really are doing and things that either steal our time or steal our joy. Those are always the two categories, but it's negative, right? They can steal your time or steal your joy and it depends on how you view your money, which, money, which part money comes into in both of those. Some of us view that as a, our time and time we could be working or our true joy. All right, so in the very beginning of the book, he really introduces a way for us to live. And it sounds funny saying a way for us to live, but we really are gonna go through behavior change and the laws of it. These chapters were the hardest for me because I'm like, they sound so simple, but it's so hard. So it's built around the four stages of habit building. So the, the author, um, James Clear, really refers to it as four laws. So four laws of behavior change. And I don't know if you've ever read in psychology about behavior modification or um, child psychology. There's so much study about how we help students and children. So my first thought is I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to trick myself. And that was what I thought of, but really it's a simple four law way to change your behaviors. So the first one is make it obvious. So in the make it obvious chapter, this was funny, make it obvious. So what does that look like? Anybody? What does it look like to make something obvious? You put it in your way or you draw attention to it. You make it stick out. You make it obvious. So you make it so that you can't um, not see it. Uh, I think these are the simple things that are like, if you want to vacuum tomorrow, then put your vacuum so that you basically trip over it when you come down the stairs. It's pretty obvious. It is right there. There you go. Yes. Put your workout clothes out. Leave your supplements on the counter. So these are the ones that I, um, again, raise your hand. This is like one that I'm like, duh, of course you make it obvious. This is not hard for me, but I also am like not an OCD clean person. So what'll happen for me is if I make myself have all these obvious cues, I'm also okay with ignoring. So like, I'll do it and it works 90% of the time. But if it's something I don't really want to do, then I'm like, like, I'll put my thieves cleaner and like a rag in the bathroom. And I still am okay with like not wiping down the counter. Like, like if it's still dirty, it won't actually bother me. So we have to do the other three steps because <laughs> it is hard not to. Yes. And Tracy, why don't you talk about that for a second? If you don't mind, because I love that too. And I think that you do that pretty well. Um, yeah, I love this idea of like designing your environment so that the habits are really obvious. Like you said, right? Like the leaving out your supplements on the counter or um, putting the vacuum in your way. So you know that you need to vacuum. So it's funny because you said, you know, I am kind of an OCD neat person. I don't like stuff on the counter. So it's like I, an internal war that I kind of have with myself. But what I've discovered is if it looks nice and it's obvious, then it's, then it checks all the boxes for me. So I'll give you an example. Okay. So I've got supplements on the counter kind of drives me nuts. Cause I'm like, Oh, it just looks like haphazard. It's out there. I like things put away personally. So I just bought this like cute, like cake tiered, like tray thing. Like it looks adorable. It's like Magnolia, you know, like, like, um, Chip and Jojo, right. Like from Magnolia market. And, you know, I have my supplements on there, so it looks pretty. It doesn't look haphazardly put out, but it's so obvious. So it's, you know, I think sometimes when, you know, whatever is in your way, right? Like the vacuum being right in front of you, like, oh my gosh, that bugs me. I don't like it in the living room. Like figure out, I think how to still design the environment so that it doesn't drive you nuts and doesn't become an obstacle for you because that's what was happening to me. It was almost becoming an obstacle to me because I didn't like it and I kept putting things away. So I had to figure out how to make it work in both instances. So that really worked out for me, but I love that idea. And I think that's such a great thing to even teach our kids, right? Like you're saying, put your clothes out, have your things planned out in advance, make it so obvious that first thing in the morning, you know exactly what books to grab, what outfit to grab, yep. or like kids who play sports, right? Like I, const I have a kid who plays football. He constantly forgets his mouth guard or whatever. And we're like, you need to design it so that it's ready for you. So if you're in a hurry, you just grab it and go. So I really love that concept. Interesting, Tracy, because to me, putting your supplements out is literally, I put a pile of the pills I have to take so that I have to take them or my counter has supplements. So it's funny. It's, I love, inter I just love interpretation, how different it is. Cause to me, the author is like, 
make it so awkward that you have to do the thing. So that sounds silly, but like, if I don't put them physically in a pile, I will never open each bottle in the morning and do it. Like I would just would never do that. So I just have them literally in a pile so that if I'm going to make breakfast, there's no way around. Like the fact is they're on a clean counter from last night. You will take them and take, you will have to, you know, they're going to have bacon grease on them. If you don't take the supplements and put them in your mouth, just like my clothes for my work for working out, I will physically have to step on my stuff in the morning. So if I choose to not do it, I'm physically like stepping on it. Um, this is really interesting for all of us to think about. I think it's also really great here because we're going to talk about inversion. I feel like this is, I, I, I wanted to wait and go through the four habits, but it's really important. It's like making the bad things hard to do. And I totally do this with food. Does anyone else like totally with like sweet snacks? Um, I used to think it was for my kids, but it's definitely for me too. Like I have these like from Imperfect Foods, they're like upcycled oat milk cookies or something. And they're like, I didn't think they were that good, but they're really good. And they're in like a big open container. I physically put them like underneath like rice and like cereal boxes because I don't need to walk by a cabinet and just like casually grab like I don't need to casually grab a cookie, but I do like myself to casually have readily available. Like I, we pre-chop and this is funny. I gave this example and it totally made me laugh. Anyone else like fruits and vegetables, we have to chop, wash, have them in our like refrigerator or no one's eating them. And what I mean by no one is when I go to get lunch, like help my kids get lunch. If it was like a whole bell pepper, I would never be like, hold on, sweetheart. Let me slice this up for you. Would you like the orange or the red? Like I would never do that. I would just grab the obvious. So I just always have containers of fruits and vegetables. And sometimes I don't put them on plates. I just put them out. And I love that example um, about inversion because hiding the bad. So in our refrigerator, we don't probably have as much bad, but like my kids do like milk and I do put the milk at the back. Cause I think the whole thing is I don't want them just drinking milk. Like they can have it once a day. Great. Have it on cereal, but you don't need to be like, it's 2, it's 2 PM and I'm thirsty. I'm going to drink, uh, I'm just going to drink 12 ounces of milk now. And maybe for your family, that's not the same. That's definitely for us. And then we have like sparkling waters. If we ever have juice, definitely alcoholic beverages in a separate refrigerator that has a really loud handle. It's like this red old one. And in front of that is always like produce and then other stuff's behind it. Not because all the choices in there are bad, but we're not, they're not necessary. Like they're not what I want people to go to first. So inversion again, hiding the bad and helping yourself think of it as difficult, like burdensome. It's really, there's a lot of labor involved. And this would be the same as like not buying it, right? If you don't buy the stuff, it can't be in your house. So if you don't buy the junk, I don't mean junk food necessarily, but like if you don't buy like a bunch of trinkets or knickknacks or blank, if blankets bother you, but you have a million of them, you have to stop buying them and invert that habit so that you don't keep feeding the animal that's bothering you. Oh, something else, man, I'm jumping all over jumping all over. Okay. And then the other two, or excuse me, three, and I, I'm just going to list them that we can go through and keep talking around. If not, I'll be all over, make it, make it, ugh, geez, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. So I really liked the, so making it attractive. I feel like Tracy, um, played into, or not played in, but explained part of that is like making it look attractive because most of us like things that look visually attractive. But I think the other part of that is making it attractive for whatever your view of attractive is. So if that is, okay, I hate all the sports bras I own, but I want to go to the gym four days a week. So you should probably not look at the new sports bra as a reward, but as a, as a way to make going to the gym attractive. Cause those are different, right? Rewarding yourself is very different than like, I got to make it. So I want to do it. Like I got to make it attractive enough. I want to do it. My kids got electric toothbrushes for Christmas. It has made my six year old attracted enough to brushing his teeth and it's easy and it's satisfying. It's all of the things. So now he brushes his teeth at night before he was totally lying about brushing his teeth, right? It was just a simple, like totally lying about it. So making it all of those things. Um, I have a friend last week that wanted to go strawberry picking. I was very busy. My kids had a weird schedule and she wanted to pack lunch. Like she asked me two hours before and it was like this elaborate plan that I'm like, I, I just can't do that. So she messaged me back. How about I pick you guys up? How about, um, I'll have cash. Cause you had to have cash. I don't ever have cash. I would have had to like go to the bank and get cash. 
She's like, I'm going to pick you up. I have cash. I'll have you back at the time you want to, so that you can work in the afternoon. And I was like, oh yes, yes. Like yes to that. So my kids had like, I brought like a whole block of cheese and whole apples and like a box of crackers. I was like, there's your lunch guys. Like, here we go. And it was fine. Cause the whole thing was she made it seem to me like I couldn't say no because it was a, ha so, so point is I have a habit of saying yes to things that I don't have to think about. And if you're not super social, that might like intimidate you. <laughs> you might be the opposite of me. We're like, oh my gosh, if someone told me they were coming to my house to pick me up, they were providing it, I would like run away because you would avoid, want to avoid it. But for me, I love being social. I love being with people. So if it's easy, I'm going to do it, right? Because if it's easy, if it's attractive, it definitely is satisfying. And then it's also something that I um, can, can depend on as far as in my head that my other habits or my other schedule for the day won't be disruptive. Disrupted. So these are the four kind of laws of behavior change. And then the four inversion laws. So this is like the best idea of that. I mean, an example of this is checking social media and smoking. I feel like those are the two most obvious um, examples because they're time sucks that happen more than once a day. Both of those things are time suckers that happen more than once a day. So if you have a habit, like I drink coffee and it's usually more than once a day too, as in I like rewarm it or it's another time. So that would be another example. But a lot of the habits I do, I need to change are, uh, they're really once. Anybody else with me, what I'm saying? Like they're like a once a day, I do this and it, it creates um, kind of a ripple all day. But this inversion principle works, especially for habits that are reoccurring that are over and over that you're so focused on your energy going to this. Then maybe it's the first thing you do when you wake up, you go to bed thinking about it. You maybe think about it at lunchtime, like you think about it. Or maybe it's every time you go to the bathroom, you scroll, scroll social media, like all kinds of things. So we are not superhumans and we have to get rid of what is in our genes. This and this stuff is genetic. And it really is hard because we want that instant gratification. We don't want that delayed reward. And it is really hard in society to put negative things in place of ones that we view as positive. So here's the four laws for that. Make it invisible. Make it invisible, guys. So with social media, that would be deleting apps. With smoking, that'd probably be like getting rid, like get rid of the temptation, get rid of lighters, get rid of cigarettes, like get rid of it, um, or whatever smoking pertains to. Um, making it unattractive. This one is funny with both of these. Making it unattractive would really be things like before you, here's a good one. Before you're able to scroll social media, you have to do a hundred burpees, eat eight stalks of lettuce, take all of your supplements and call your grandma. Not that any of these things are bad, but like, can you imagine if that's what you told yourself? Okay. So that would make it unattractive and difficult, making it difficult. So making it difficult really is the like, okay, so I have to reinstall the app. I have to go plug back in the TV. If you watch TV a lot, I have to go to the store and buy that substance, whatever that makes it hard because most of us don't have that time in their life where we can just let's go guys. And we just pop in the car. We don't have any, oh, oh here's a good one. Maybe there's those cookies for you. You love those. And there's no longer any cookies in the back of your cabinet. And you're really trying to watch your weight. Well, if every time you crave something sweet, you have to drive out and go get it. I can guarantee you that either you learn, you have no self-discipline at all. And that this habit matters more than anything else, or you're going to eat less sugar because you're going to realize that every time you want it, which is probably multiple times a day, you have to physically go to a store or a restaurant. Like that's crazy, right? Because you probably don't actually have time. And then the final part of this inversion is make it unsatisfying. So really this is for me in my head, um, when I think about unsatisfying is if you have to go through all this work to do it, and then it lasts like two or three minutes, it's totally unsatisfying because you're like, why did I put myself through all of this just to get these three minutes of pleasure that were annoying to even get in the first place. So when we looked at identity, um, this was the first step. So I wanted to present those first, but then we're going to go back and kind of talk about the foundation of these habits. And of course, now that I said, I was outside with y'all, I'm like burning hot and I'm going to move inside with my burning hot phone and my burning hot coffee. So identity, this is my favorite because I'm a runner and I will always say I am a runner. Here's the thing. I meet so many people that tell me they're trying to run. They're learning to run. They would like to run. They run some, but they're not a runner. They like to run, but they'll never do a race. They only run on treadmills. They only run outside. They only run on hills. They only run downhill. They only run on trails. They only run with their grandma. Like people say stuff all the time. And I think it's crazy. Or here's another great one. I am not a business owner. I kind of just have this side thing or we're not really, we're not incorporated. So it's not really a business or 
I just do it for fun. I don't really make a lot of money or I've only gotten a paycheck once and I don't know, or, you know, it, it's kind of like a, uh, it's an MLM or it's a franchise. It's not really being an entrepreneur. I don't really own a business. Anybody ever heard those things? For sure. We all do this all the time. So here's what I loved. The identity piece is speaking true identity about yourself. So if you, and running just the best example for me, because I hear it, I literally probably hear this like multiple times a week, even around people who actually run often, it's a little bit funny. They, again, I'm not a runner. Here's the thing. You speak life into what you want to become. And for the most part, you probably are already the thing that you're saying that you want to become. If you lift weights every week, every week, you are a weightlifter. And I'm saying, I raise my hand and be totally guilty of that. I'm like, oh, I run, I do some other things, but I'll like not ever say, oh, I am blah, or I am whatever. I know it says, sounds weird, but like, I don't take yoga often. I would definitely say, I'm not saying I practice yoga, but what I would say is I am doing yoga today, not trying to do, I'm not thinking about doing it. So even on that level, and I wanted to clarify that because there are things that you might not be able to say I am. But don't say I try to, or I've done it before. That's not true. Speak identity. And if you've ever enrolled one person in our business, you are a business owner. And if you've ever made a paycheck in any kind of business where it is, um, even, I don't want to say it in a way it's not going to make sense legally, think about internationally too, where it's a paycheck that's not coming from an employer, but from an income that's generated from affiliate links or from referrals you are a business owner. Like you, you own a business and here's a great one to you. Even if your kids, here's the thing. Even if your kids went to school all year, except for the virtual learning last year, and you say stuff like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I could never teach my kids. Um, you've taught your kids since the day they were born. You are a teacher to your kids. So speak that I teach my kids. I am great at it. I um, enjoy it. Right. I even like say stuff to myself. Sometimes that's difficult. If you've ever planted something, you're a gardener. If you kill everything, we never said you have to have everything alive to be a gardener, but you are that that is the act that you're doing right now. Yes. You cannot, once you speak words out loud, it's going to be a lot harder for you to cancel the action that follows than if you don't speak the identity and speak the words out loud. And if you, yeah, I get to teach my kids. That's where I was going to, that's one of the things I was going to get to this book. Uh, for years, there's so many different leadership gurus, psychologists, people in the management field that talk about that phrase of get to versus have to, or I am, or I'm trying to, all of those things, but you get to do it. And when you speak that part into identity, it is huge. So today I get to take my kids to swim lessons. I'm so excited. I get to today teach um, or lead a conversation on this book. I get to call and pay a medical bill that there's money in the bank that I can use to pay for it. Today, I get to walk my dog. I'm so thankful that my dog likes to walk and that I have legs that are able to move. And it will help you form a position of gratitude in your heart. And it will also help you that when you do, so when I am anxious, I totally speak in the negative and I try not to attach identity to it. But I always have to tell myself when I'm like frantic this morning, I sent some, I had some frantic thoughts. And then I felt like, you know what? You get to decide you as in me, I get to decide who I am and what my priorities are and where I'm headed. And you get to decide. And this is just simply one habit at a time. Maybe it's as simple as making coffee. My husband just started drinking coffee six months ago. He has gotten so good at it. And here's the thing. He told me for probably the first four months that he doesn't drink coffee. He's not a coffee drinker. He just has it sometimes. I was like, like every morning, like some, sometimes. And now a couple months ago, I told him he's so good at making, um, he does, you know, we don't do drip, but we usually do like French press or you pour over some. I'm like, you are so good at making coffee. And he's like, I'm the best coffee maker. I am. I'm really good at it. I'm like, you are. But what that doesn't do is make me any less of a barista in our house. I'm totally sucked. But you know what I'm saying, guys? Someone else's light shining in this specifically, I think with women, is that we forget that just because we speak identity about ourselves and something we're doing, it doesn't make anyone less of um, a success in that area. I feel like fitness is just the easiest one. I don't swim, but I want to swim. You know what I mean is like, pools like lap swim. So I always I'm like, Oh, you're such an amazing swimmer. I can never do that. Here's the thing. If I choose to swim one morning a week, which 
guys, I don't think I ever will. But if I do, I will also be a swimmer. It doesn't make my friend Tina a worse swimmer because me, because of my identification as a swimmer. You have a new business builder, new brand partner. If they say they own a young living business, it doesn't diminish the size of your young living business. It doesn't do anything. It actually is just a reflection of who they believe they are and what they believe, what they believe about themselves. So identity is really important with habits. And something else that I love as an example, as he was saying to his friend that smoked for 13 years, it doesn't say he used to smoke. He just, he literally is like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a non-smoker, right? Like not I used to, or I've done that before. And I think that's where a lot of us have to get um, in our heads where we're tripped up with our past, like things we did maybe as a young adult or a teenager, like you guys speak identity into yourself because you're not like that person was a different person. So today, if you do not believe you're a reader, let's start with that. If you read this book, you are a reader. If you read 10 pages of this book, you still are a reader. If you read street signs, you're actually a reader. You just have to develop a love for it. That's a very different thing. Being something, I am a cook. Am I an amazing cook? Probably not. Am I ever going to become an amazing? I have no idea, but I am a cook. I do cook every day. Like it is something I do. I am a gardener. I am a hobby farmer, like stuff that I think sounds ridiculous is true, right? I want you to try that. So yeah, anybody want to share on this? Cause I felt like this was huge. Like we had to drive it home for this whole topic. You know what? That was so good, Ashley. I, there was, some, there was actually a point in the book where I was like, oh my gosh, it was like blinking lights, like huge, huge. Like for me, I was like, this is like, like mind blowing. And it was the part when he was talking about goals and systems. I don't know if you guys saw that part yeah. or really, it was freaking amazing. And in a nutshell, what he was saying is like, you know, if we're only focused on goals or like goal, like a goal first mentality, like when I get to that rank, that paycheck, um, when I run that marathon, right, I will be happy. But what happens is you achieve that goal. And then what happens after that, right? He's, he, his whole thing was like, you know, if we're just focused on the goal, right? It's, it's just this never ending cycle. Whereas when we focus more on the system and the process, right? Are we going to get to that goal? Like, yeah, if we're doing the same thing, right? All the time. And we're really, you know, hyper-focused on it. Yes, we're going to inevitably get to that goal, but then we enjoy the system so much that it's really laying down those habits, right? Versus like the goal that we're kind of looking in the distance. So that really was very remarkable to me. And I think it's just something, um, you know, we talk about even for this business, right? Like your IPAs, you know, doing these things and like the, they don't change, right? Whether you're just starting out, whether you're a star, whether you're a silver or beyond, it's those processes, those systems. So this is, I love this part. Okay. So, um, Goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that mm -hmm. lead to those results. Achieving a goal only changes your life for the moment. That's counterintuitive, you know, when you're thinking about improvement. We need to think about changing our results, right? But the results are not the problem. What we need to change are the systems that cause those results. When you solve problems at the results level, you only solve them temporarily. In order... Mm -hmm to improve for good, you need to solve those problems at the system level, right? So that's kind of going back to these habits that Ashley has been talking about. Um, when we have those habits laid out, right? We are following that system or that process we've laid out for ourselves. It's just continuous improvement. Are we gonna reach our goals? Yes, but that's not like in our mind, the only reason why we're doing it. We're doing it because we love the habits and we love the system. So that really was so, so good for me um, as just like a great reminder. I loved it. What's that? Give us another example of that because I read it too. It was so interesting for me because, you know, I probably need someone to design systems for me for everything. Um, no, I say that. Yeah, like I'll redo my closet, right? And I'll think this is the system. Like this is now the system. But like it's totally not a system. It's something I tried to do, and then next week it's back to normal. And that is how, it's how I am with everything. And so that part, I love that you're like, I loved it. I was like, it made me so sad. It made me sad. So tell me, like, give me an example. I know you just talked about, but I mean, give me an example of something. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us on here are 
work from home moms. Give an example of a system you can think of that would be an actual system that we could implement. So just kind of going back to his whole example, right? Of like um, the make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it yeah. satisfying. You know, I think it's just trying to figure out like, what are the things that can help you? So for me, like when I think about work at home mom, I think of, you know, like what are my daily, what are my income producing activities, right? Yeah. And so it's one of those things where I have to tell myself, you know, I will not watch TV, right? Until I do these things, right? I will not lay down on my bio mat. So I don't know if you guys know, like my bio mat, like right by eight o'clock, I am like on that bio mat. I just need it because my bones are achy, but I have certain things that I need to do throughout the day before I can like rest for the night, right? So, um, before, so for example, it's like, okay, did I reach out to prospects? Did I reach out to members, right? Did I communicate with my um, business builders? Did I hit those three things? And if I didn't, I need to go back and do it. Otherwise, there's no TV for the night. I'm not laying down on my bio mat. It's not time to rest and relax yet. So it's been, when, when you said earlier, right? Social media, 1000% agree. I totally get sucked in. And so I have to like put the phone down. So it's a constant edit process for me personally, because you go in to do one thing. And before you know it, you see a notification, someone else posted something, someone else messaged you. And then before you know it, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for an hour. What am I? I had other plans. I had other things that I needed to do. So it might be one of those things where you do the inverse of that, right? So making it not obvious. Something that I've done is I turn off notifications personally because I don't like the distraction. Um, I will just like <laughs> be all over the place. I like to really focus in on one task at a time. Even if I'm only spending five minutes on follow-up, that's five minutes of follow-up. So time blocking also works really well for me, um, but turning off those notifications, right? So it's not satisfying. It's not obvious. Um, I like to do the time blocking and I make myself, I've trained myself to like only focus on that one thing. If an email comes up, because that's the other thing that pulls me away, right? I'm like, nope, that can wait until my next break. I need to focus on this first. So I think just, you know, having things laid out like that, like what are the three things you need to accomplish today, whether it's for your business, for your health, for your kids, for your family, for all of those things. I just think it's really important, um, but writing those three things down. So I think that's another part of like making it obvious. I don't know what it looks like for you guys. Um, I time block on my calendar, but if it's, I also like to write on a post-it note because I like my, I like my desk neat and clear. If there's a big pink post-it note on my computer, my goal is to like tear it off and throw it in the trash. Like I don't want it on there because I want a nice clean space. So when I write the three things that I need to have done, it's on that post-it note, those things are going to get done because my goal is to rip it off because, you know, intrinsically, I just want a nice clean space. So I think whatever that kind of looks like for you, maybe it's not a post-it note. Maybe you've got a whiteboard. Maybe it's, you know, an alert on your phone. It's something on your calendar. But I think that's really, really important. Um, and the satisfying piece, like I said before, when I get you know, the things done, those three things for my business, then I know, all right, I'll be able to like settle in at night, relax, maybe watch a show, lay down on my bio mat, relax. But, you know, I love just those um, incorporating the systems in there. And here's something that I want to tell you is I used to be very sort of focused on the goal. So like I need to get five signups this month right? Like goal oriented in that way. But what happens when you miss the goal, right? Then it gets very, you feel defeated. You feel like did, I failed at that if you didn't make that right. So when we focus on the process first, right? Like what are the things that you need to do to get those five signups? You need to teach classes. You need to reach out to prospects. You need to do your follow-up, you know, reach out to your fence sitters, right? You need to do these certain things to get those signups. So focusing in on the process rather than the goal, will you at some time get five signups? Yes. Maybe some months you get two or one, or maybe you get 10. But here's the thing, when you're focusing on the process, I have control over the process. I don't necessarily have control over the outcome. So for anybody who, who is like that, where they like to sort of control things, I'm totally like this, but I'm like, 
when I have control over the process versus the outcome, right? I know what I need to do. So I can check that off my list, right? I reached out to 10 people today. I taught a class this week. I can check those things off, right? And when I check it off my list, I feel good about it versus, man, I didn't reach my goal of, of signing up five people this month, right? Then it feels like I didn't get to check that box, right? I didn't have control over it. But when you focus on the, on the process and the system, you do these things, it's just like clockwork. And ultimately, I think even as a builder, I think this is a really great concept too, because you can teach it to other people, right? Yes, the goal is to enroll people, but really it's the system, focus on the system. So I feel like that duplication really comes into play too, because when your team sees you're working on enrolling, you're working on reaching out to members, right? Product education, you're helping your builders, then they'll see that you're doing that too. So that's kind of my long-winded answer on focusing on systems, but um, I just, this, it was a very remarkable book. I think sometimes we get very goal oriented and I think goals are important too. I think it's great to put them out there, but I think it's not the only thing. I love this idea of really focusing in on your system. Awesome. I just know. So I think what happens uh, to a lot of us is um, we think we've changed everything. And so we don't do the first thing. Anybody else with me? And, and that is not helpful. That's why I like with books like this, when I have to work through them, I really have to write down like, what are some things you're going to work on first? So I have my list. We're not going to have to share theirs. I mean, we have, you know, everyone probably has um, a list. I mean, I, for one of mine, it's really silly, but I have a terrible habit of mm, be, being reactive on social media at night when I know I've actually done what I'm going to do for that day. I'm not done ever, but I've done, I'm, I'm done. Like I've done what I'm going to do. And so for me, because we're in different time zones, it's usually for me, if I have a class at nine, it's over at 10, then after 11 PM, I don't like, there's not actually anything good that's going to happen, but me probably being real random because people aren't talking to me. They're going to bed if they're on the East Coast. Like it's just not. So I have been really conscious of being like, okay, at 11 o'clock, like you can work till 11. And again, we're on different time zones. So that intimidates you. It's because for me, a lot of times in the evening hours that are like dinner and kids activities, I'm not working. So then when I am again, it's like after eight. So then for me, it's like three hours where I can kind of get a lot done, not always sitting in focus work, but if I'm going to do anything that night, it has to happen. So for me, yeah, one step, that's all I was saying. An example is like, so last night I was in bed at 11 and I was like, you know what? I felt like, I was like, that's right. I was like, you can, because at 10 53, I was like, you're going to bed. Like I had told myself that that on two nights a week, I'm going to bed at 11. And not that I stay up until four in the morning. I get up at four. But I mean, it, it's just that I have to make myself have a time because I've realized for years, I don't have a time and it's like real random and I don't wake up randomly. So I'm like, why do you go to sleep randomly? It doesn't make sense. So if you want to do, be intentional, it's just one thing at a time that guys, yes, I read books all the time that I need to sleep like seven or eight hours a night. I'm not like, there's just like, that's not going to happen where tomorrow I'm going to be like, tonight you're going to bed at 7.30 PM. Ash. Like it's not because it's not, it is such a big lifestyle change that it wouldn't happen. And it's the same thing with guys. If you get to virtual school or you to homeschool this year, you weren't just all of a sudden like tomorrow for eight hours, I will be with my kids and that's all I'm going to do. And to prepare for that. Like, that's not what you did. You worked your way into figuring out how to chunk and carve out and figure out how to do that. So really important um, for me is to remember that sometimes systems are step-by-step step and I build them and then I have to use them and keep using them and not just, ugh, not just trying it once. So habit stacking and this idea, there is so much in this book about habit stacking. And I just love the language. It was easy for me to understand the language. And I don't know about you guys, but if I understand the language, I can, I can really, really use it. So here, here we go. Kind of habit stacking It is when you connect an existing habit to a new one. So if implementation intention of doing that is not really your thing, this might work for you. So you can get two of them together and then it will help you because you want to do one of them because you already do it. So after whatever the current habit is, I will, and the new habit. So after I get off of my call at nine on, I mean, at 10 on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, um, or any time, because you can do this too, it can be loose, or any time I have one, I will run a report by most recent order date 
and I will thank people for their orders. Okay, maybe that's really simple. But the whole thing is, I didn't just randomly say every day I will run a report and message it, like, because that's overwhelming. It has to be after something I know I'm going to do either daily or on a predictable basis. So, after here's a great one for me. After I eat breakfast, I will brush my teeth. And I know that sounds random, but I like to brush my teeth when I first get up, but then I hate that all day long. I feel like I don't have fresh breath because then I'm like eating and drink coffee and it's gross. So probably a few months ago, that might sound silly, but I did this without like intentionally, but I was like, okay, after you eat breakfast, if that's five hours after you get up, you will walk upstairs and brush your teeth. And maybe to y'all, you think that's gross. Of course you will. No, it was not a habit. My habit was you get up, go in the bathroom, do your stuff. And then it's nighttime when you brush your teeth again. And it's fine. That's like oral hygiene wise twice is fine. I don't need to brush them more. But for me, I never felt like it was part of me getting ready because I didn't get ready in the first thing in the morning. I just got up. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. Here's a good one for you. I am messy. I have literally had to tell myself when you park your car, you will get out the things you brought into it. That's not normal for me. I am totally like in a hurry, just run right in, leave your bags in there, leave your water bottles, like, oh, whatever, like have it, like, here's the deal. Don't even notice it. Like it's something I would not even notice the pile of crap I would stack up in the passengers. Like don't even notice it because it's, it wasn't a priority. So we got a new car probably six weeks ago. And now I have to literally, when I park my car, I have to literally say, you parked your car. It's not even trash. It's stuff. And it's like, now get out your stuff. And it feels like a burden, but I've told myself that I am parking my car. That's a habit I have to have. I can't not park my car. I can't just keep driving, right? So trapping yourself into doing those. If it's reading, reading, anyone else have this? I read every day. I want to read my Bible before I read anything else. So my trick has always been after you read your Bible, you can read anything else you want. And again, this might sound silly. It might sound like more of a discipline than a habit. But what it does is I know that I've spoken identity that I will every day read my Bible because that's also speaking identity. And then I've spoken that I also will read something else. So what I've done is I haven't said, you have 20 minutes a day to read. You have an hour and a half to read. You have two hours to read. Because then you know what happens? You don't do it. So I have to, you know, like kind of stack them. And I started doing that probably in January. And I'm like, okay, most of the things I plan to do every year, I don't do, but that was easy. And in my head, it makes sense. And I prepare for it. I make it attractive. And then I stack them together. So maybe those are just some examples. Um, maybe not. I started walking my dog every day, also in January, because he's crazy. I like it, but he's just cra- like he's just crazy at night, and he drives me crazy. And he's like, I'm down the stairs, and it's annoying. So I don't feel like I have the extra. T- like it's not. I feel like it's an extra thing. So what I started doing, and this might sound silly, but I have said, when you go to take a kid to their first activity, like Avery has swim at noon, right? You will put like, when you go to take your kid to swim or whatever it is, but it's usually swim, you will put on your walking shoes. So what do I do automatically? Might sound silly, but my shoes, it's annoying to me to have those kinds of shoes on. Like I literally have them on right now. I have not walked him yet, but now I have on these shoes. And the only reason I have those on is to work out. So I'm not working out, but I will walk my dog because the cue I gave myself is the shoes. So now these shoes, the dog will get walked. Anybody else? Maybe I, I feel like I sound really crazy when I give examples. Y'all, I feel really crazy. No. When my kids both started reading this year, the habit was after we read to you, you read to us. So what do we have to do? I set out the books when they're taking baths or showers of like, okay, so Owen's going to read these. They're going to be underneath the Amelia Earhart and the Bible that we're going to read first. So when you pick it up, whatever parents reading, you're like, oh, there's tiny books for a kindergarten. Like you're like, there's no way you're like, oh, sorry guys. Didn't see, Owen didn't see his, but like, you don't do that. No one does that. I mean, I did right now. Hopefully none of my kids saw me, but I like that because it makes it obvious. What I don't do a good job of this with habit stacking is in things I can't see. Anybody else with me? Like if it's things I'm going to do online or it's like a bill I'm going to pay or a phone call. It's much harder for me because I actually don't ever usually want to do like the stacking makes it harder when it's like, when you check your kids swim meet registration every month with what's coming up, then you will double pay on your student loans or something like that was a random example. My whole thing is it doesn't work very well when I think it's things 
that we don't view as attractive with the first one. So yes, if anyone else is with me, I think of those things a lot, especially with things with the business that you're trying new when you're like, when you, here's a great one. When you do an Instagram story, then you will go check comments in your Facebook group. So guys, it kind of works, but here's the whole thing. What if you don't do Instagram stories? Like what if that's not a habit you already have consistently? So I think it's always scaling ourselves. A lot of us think we do something every day. That's not every day. I don't know if anyone else is with me. Like I'll say that all the time. I'm like, I always, or I do. And I'm like, oh, geez. So I need to pair it with a different habit that I do have every day. And that I am already doing. Again, I'm talking too much. Someone should cut me off. Y'all should talk. Okay, a couple more things in this just to get us thinking. So we talked about environment and then this is where the two minute rule comes in next. This is where I wanna talk about it next. It's just a hard one, but a good one. Procrastination. It is very clear to us to have atomic or explosive or a things that are going to affect our environment around us and us personally. We actually have to, um, we have to do them. <laughs> So we set our expectations real high and remember, we want to create these habits that only require two minutes to get them done. Two, two minutes. I'm pausing saying that because I have a pile of postcards in front of me, but this morning I tried to tell myself every time you walk by the table, you will do five. You know why? two minutes. Because if not, I have about 200 postcards that I need to write on them, right? And stick the address label. So it might sound silly, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> and my habit, my point of saying this is if I constantly have postcards on the table and I say that when I walk by this table, because there's other routes in my house, I can avoid it. I will do five. Then guys, every week I could do probably 200. And I don't know if that makes sense or if that's not how you think, but that is for me that sometimes if it takes two minutes, I'll do it. If it takes two hours, I feel like I need to carve it out of my day. And that's usually not feasible in that very day. It's like, I'm going to have to wait. Tracy, will I be able to screen share? I think I can. Yes, I made you co-host, so you should be able to. Okay. Oh, I love it. When I put Amelia down for a nap or sleep, I do 10 burpees. That's so good. Okay. I don't know. I'm and when I about. brush my teeth, when I brush my teeth, I'm doing squats now. Oh man, you're good. It's on, it's on a timer for two minutes, the, the, the toothbrush. So I know I'm getting four minutes a day of <laughs> squats. Good. So right here, I, um, this is just, I wanted to pull up a couple of these different I can send you the website actually, because they are all on his website, but there's actually um, another website I have where they were all linked together that I'll show you. But this is what I loved about this. If you want to print it, I'm going to put it in the comments, but the, the cheat sheet part of it is creating a good habit. So these are what we talked about with the laws and then down here, how to break a bad habit. So using the inversion. And I love that, but there's some more things that I want to show you. Oh, that would not be it. That's awkward awkward for everyone. No, it's not. Here we go. Habits scorecard. So this is something that we are going to do. <laughs> I had this saved as not in the middle of the book where it really is, but I'm like, let's maybe do this towards now because it's not fun. Daily habits. You're going to do positive, negative, or neutral. My view might be different than your view of a habit. So if you put on there, brush your hair. Okay. So like in my life, brushing my hair is neutral, which means like, I don't really need to do it. Doesn't really make it look better. I should probably do it when I, when I wash it, but it's not like a daily positive habit for me. And maybe it is for you. Maybe I view a negative habit as, maybe I view a negative habit as yelling at my kids, which I don't actually, it's a bad example. Maybe you're like, well, I mean, I yell at my kids all the time. I like, they're so big and so loud. I have to. Maybe a terrible example. I'm just trying to give you all funny examples how we could view habits differently. So some of the things that are neutral are just neutral because they just like, to me, making breakfast for my kids is neutral. You know why? Because I have to do it. Someone else has to do it if I don't do it. They're not old enough to really do that themselves very well. So it's just kind of neutral. And it is a habit. I do do it every single day. 
and it does follow and precede other habits. So like the burpees, you're like doing burpees every day. Good. Well, now it's a habit here, so it's positive. So just list out some things you do every day. And even um, if it's overwhelming, start with your morning habits and your nighttime habits and work your way from there. So you can get a print the sheet out too, but I'd love for you to put in the comments. Um, there's the other one. Stacking. I love all of these templates. I, there we go. This is, this overwhelms me. If anybody else is with me, I am not, mm, I don't like spreadsheets. I don't really like this literally overwhelmed me. I've tried to do this before and it's like something I've done for a week and thrown away because I'm like, I cannot track, like I can't do it. Um, so here we go where you write the habit and then you literally check it off. Check it off every day of the month. And this I think works well when you're talking about like drinking water or like diet changes or like posting on social media, doing it, you know, Instagram stories, following up with you. Like it works. What I don't know that it works as well as when it's a softer type of habit where you're like, I'm trying to develop the new habit of responding with grace to my children. Like that probably is going to be harder because at the end of the day, you're going to be like, oh, did I or not? I don't know. And you're going to scale the whole day instead of just that one time you did it. So I love this. There's another, and I'm not really advertising this necessarily, but I just thought it was a cool option. If you like pretty things there, you can order like their website, this really pretty habit journal, which has like the stacker in it, the tracker, all the things. Then, oh my goodness. I thought this was so good. Where is it? This to me, I'm like, this overwhelmed me, but I'm like, it is so good because it's like signing. If y'all ever had a boss return in your goals and you have like a meeting about your goals and then you go back and visit your goal. I mean, I have, I had a great person I worked for that is exactly what we did. And it was really hard because I didn't always meet them and they were very financial or like they were very much measurable and we would talk about it. So what I liked about this is this is like a habit contract. So this is quarter one goals. Okay, Let's, his, the dude's name is Brian. But the thing is, what he was looking at is weight and body fat percentages. And there were some consequences. If he doesn't follow them, he has certain consequences he will have to do. And the accountability was that he would be accountable to his trainer. And he will also give Joey $200 if he misses any day of logging his food. So his example was, you better make it not outrageous, but you better make it painful to not do your habits. And then having a, an accountability part, a partner and your spouse sign off on it for you. I thought that was, woo. Man, I thought that was good, but I was like, that is so hard, right? So, so hard. So I'm going to send um, you guys the link to, I just thought that website was a little bit better than the, than the James Clear one. Um, but I would love to open it up. I know we only have a few minutes, but I would love to open it up for, I would love to open it up for um, anybody to chime in. Anybody? Anybody? No? I was just going to say, I think this book could easily be a part of like a, like a sort of like an onboarding for new builders, right? Like thinking about habits and how can you create these habits for your business? Again, systems and processes, right? So that you can get to those ultimate goals that you're wanting to get. But the examples are very, very helpful. Like even just like in everyday life, right? Um, like what Analia is saying in the comments, right? Grabbing a piece of chocolate or grabbing a treat. You know, I think just like those everyday things and like helping people to recognize even things outside the business as examples. And then let's now think of like business examples of how we can kind of put this into practice would be huge. So I love the suggestion for this book. So thank you so much for that, Ashley. But yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Both the, you know, the laws that he spelled out, but the inverse of the laws. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so genius, right? So like if social media is like this negative habit that you find yourself getting sucked into, like how are some ways that we can make it invisible, right? Unattractive, unsatisfying. I'm like, oh, that's so good. I can see why people take, you know, social media apps off their phone, for instance, right? So it's not so immediate. It's not so like readily available um, so that they can get things done. So I think it was fantastic. So thank you so much for suggesting it. I don't know if anybody else, Annalie or Danny has something to add. I'd like to ask a question. 
Um, what are some rewards that you guys have in place? Because that's a struggle for me to think of a reward for something. I would say for me, um, like I said earlier, like resting, I mean, ultimately I'm going to rest at the end of the day, but just like knowing like there is such a strong association because this, bioma, <laughs> I'm telling you, like I, my bones are achy at the end of the night. And so like, just the idea of like this amazing heating pad and I'm in my bed and I'm like, oh yes, I'm so looking forward to that. Right. Or like, I love to have my cup of tea in the morning. So like kind of associating a habit with that, that habit stacking, I thought was so good. So like before I make my cup of tea, I'm going to reach out to one prospect or I'm going to do one thing. I think where it gets a little dicey, right, is like, I'm going to go check my Facebook group because you know what happens after that, right? It's like two hours later and you're like, what am I doing here? I don't even remember what I came here for. So I think it's just really being very intentional and whatever that kind of looks like. I'm a super visual person. So like the post-it note or something that I can visually see and I'm like, even if it's like a post-it note by my coffee cup, right? Like in the morning. So it's like, all right, I got to do that before I even drink that. I'm going to do this real quick, something really simple, but I loved that two minute rule as well. Um, you know, I think if we're feeling like it's going to take hours and hours and hours, like, um, I love those power hours that we do. Right. But if I think I need to wait for an hour to do something, it might not get done. I can't tell you how much the two minute rule kind of works for me where I'm like, I, I often will do my business in two minute increments. I'm going to send one message. I'm going to invite one person. I'm going to do one follow-up. I'm going to reach out to one builder, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. And I think that, I think pairing that together is really easy, but Ashley, do you have other rewards that you like to kind of stack things onto? It's really funny because, um, daily, probably not, but I think like, not like what you're saying about like at the end of the night and like cup of tea and the more it's interesting. I think a lot of my stuff is it's probably, I feel like it up. sounds not that healthy or maybe it does like with business goals or running both of those things. I feel like I'm like, when you do this. So it doesn't really make a habit. I've always like reward, like I reward myself a lot for like, if, you know, like if this certain volume is better, this is, then you can um, book a night and she can take for your family or if, and it, I don't know. My point is maybe that isn't super helpful, but it's usually things that happen on an almost monthly basis, if that makes sense. Could I do them anyway? Sure. But, but I like that feeling of like, after you do these things, also like beginning of the month, I tend to schedule any personal appointments for either the middle of the month or the very beginning. And I almost like look forward that I'm like, after you do all of these things this month, contacting me, like whatever it is, then on the third, you get to do this. And I don't even mean like a day. I mean like a massage or like whatever it is that I probably am doing for myself that I need to. Anyway, I like to look at it as a reward and same thing with like, for me with like running, it's a lot of like, once you do this race, then you can buy a new pair of shoes or once you, um, this week, once you schedule all of your classes for next month and you have three in-person things, then you can, this is hilarious. I only like workout clothes. So I'm like, then you can order these pants. These aren't very helpful. These aren't very helpful. No, I think it's totally helpful or like kind of the, um, maybe it's like having a lunch out once a week. So I think it's sort of pairing it with something that's healthy, right? Like not a lunch out where I'm going to like eat a ton of donuts, right. but right. So it's because you don't want to like sabotage maybe another habit that you're trying to form of like eating healthy, but like, I will have like, you know, uh, a dinner out with, you know, my family at the end of the week, actually, I will tell you something that we do for my son, who is very much like a three, um, is he plays football. So we tell him, right. If he gets a touchdown in his game, we're going to go out for the night to eat, right? And so he'll be like telling his teammates, he'll be like, I need a touchdown. I want to go out to eat tonight. And like, whether they win or lose doesn't matter, right? But if he gets a touchdown, he gets to choose a place that we go out to eat. And like, he is like, I'm getting that touchdown. Like every time there was one time he didn't get it. 
he was so bummed. And I'm like, I know it stinks. I'll make you something really nice at home. But, um, you know, I think uh, it really does help to motivate him because he's like, I'm, I'm going to get that touchdown no matter what. doesn't matter if we win or lose because I don't have control over that, but I have more control over getting that touchdown. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I love that. So Danny is saying, um, how can one habit stack, but not rush through the undesirable habit to get to the desired one? Oh, that's really good. Um, yeah, I think it's, I love the two minute increment. Like you have, let's say it's the, you know, you want to run that marathon, right? He gives this example. It's the, the first thing you do is like put on your shoes, right? That's the first thing. Maybe the second thing is you put on your workout clothes. I mean, it's like so simple. And he was even given, the author was even giving this example of this guy who eventually ended up losing, I don't know, something like over a hundred pounds. But in the beginning, he went to the gym, like literally it was like two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then after a while, he's like, well, I'm already here. I might as well just stay for like 30 minutes or an hour. Like it's such a waste of time to drive here and then go home after five minutes. But it was just making those small incremental habit changes right before jumping in and doing the whole big thing, it's really hard, right? There's even that, that old saying, right? How do you eat an elephant? It's one little bite at a time. You can't do the whole thing. So I love the two minute thing. Yeah, I'm just looking at comments here. Just my, um, I don't know if those answers made sense, but to me, if it's like a habit that's pretty clearly defined, you can't really rush through it. Like the postcard thing, I can't really, I can't like, I have to write a sentence, if that makes sense. Like I can't really make it shorter. If it's brushing your teeth or washing the dishes, like if it's something, I feel like you can't shorten it if it's a defined thing. Reaching out to prospects, if that's what kind of thing you're thinking, you for sure can shorten it. But I think it's like quality, just to, like speaking that into whatever you're doing too, that I know for me, I'd rather have something done. And I know that it's like quality, that I don't have to redo it. I don't want to have to redo it. That's not fun, right? Like I have a kid that, wrote a paper really sloppy and I used to rewrite it. I don't want to rewrite anything in my life. And maybe that sounds silly, but um, I'm sorry. But just kind of thinking it from that scale. And um, what you just said about the football game, I did want to give you an example because you might want to do it for yourself. We do swim meets. Do you get a Chick-fil-A lunch? No matter regardless of how you do. And I don't know why, but it literally, and only that kid, maybe it's because I don't love Chick-fil-A. But like only that kid gets Chick-fil-A. And so it might sound silly, but like my kids are so excited because now this summer, they're all three on, on a swim team for the first time. So I don't really love it. And Bruce, we're, we're good. I mean, we'll just get them, but it should be just Avery, then Avery and Ethan. And I let them get any two items they want. So sometimes they're ridiculous. Sometimes they aren't. Like sometimes it's nuggets and fries, but sometimes Avery gets like a sandwich and a large chocolate shake. But I don't say anything. There's no say, there's no word speaking. It is you get to do this. And it's like super fun. So for me, a lot of times, like when Rachel and I will do workshops at branches, I don't even love charcuterie boards. I do the idea, but I meant specifically, I like the cheese better than the meat. Sorry if anybody's going to judge me, but like we always get, if that makes sense, the habit is like, once we set up and we get everything ready to check people in, we then order the board and it might sound silly, but it is, we've done it so many times that even after not doing it for a year, we automatic, like it was an automatic, like it was a reward really. And it was like a, what we were doing first point of saying that is what we were doing first wasn't undesirable, but it was like the work was done. Then we did that. And then we had another segment of work, right? It was like a, it's so almost in my head, I think a little bit of Danny specifically, if you are thinking of um, habits and there's like one really one that you're like, I don't want to do it, but I know I should. I actually think you could stack it around things you enjoy on both sides. And it doesn't have to be something that's an actual reward type of situation, but if maybe you're trying to become a reader and you're really not right now, then maybe it's, okay, maybe you like taking baths. So you're like, okay, when I read my book, I can take a bath and then I can put on my favorite CBD oil in my face. Like maybe it sounds weird, but I think some of the things that we do every day, we take for granted as habits. Cause I know for me, like I like my routine. Um, I don't really have a relaxing bathroom routine because I feel like I'm rushing, but I do like what I do, if that makes sense. Like I like to use the cell light magic oil and I like to put on my CBD beauty serum. I like to um, check for stray hairs in between my eyebrows and then 
never apply makeup apparently, but that's what I like to do. So if anybody is with me, I could probably add in an undesirable habit as part of that routine. And I would do it. Like it probably added something that takes two minutes in that. And I'd probably be like, okay, well, this is whatever, I guess I'll just do this. So, all right. Anybody else? I appreciate your time so much. We have had a blast and I can't wait to see everybody commenting when they watch the recording and all the people's habits, including our own that get to change from this. So thank you guys.